but of course the atom is not always found in the lowest energy state. As there are other orbits allowed in Bohr's model, there are other, higher energy states in the quantum mechanical hydrogen atom. These states are defined primarily by the quantum number, n, that we talked about earlier. And for each state, the electron has a different energy, which results from the shape of the electron cloud. For n equals 1, called the ground state, the shape is a symmetric cloud, the same in all directions. For n equals 2, the shape can take two forms, although both shapes have the same energy. One is a double spherical cloud, one sphere inside the other, while the other shape for n equals 2 is in the shape of a dumbbell. For other values of n, the shapes can be pretty strange. Like this torus, plus dumbbell shape. An electron in the lowest energy shell in an atom can be struck by and absorb the energy of a photon, giving it enough energy to jump to the next energy shell and the reverse process allows the electron to jump back down into the lowest energy shell and emit a photon. The color of the photon depends on the energy difference between the two shells. This explains the spectral lines that identify an element. Since white light contains all the colors in the spectrum, when we shine white light on a sample of an element under the right conditions, the atoms absorb all the photons that allow their electrons to jump to other energy shells. So, the absorption spectrum is all the colors in white light minus those that match the difference in energy shells within the atom. And when those electrons spontaneously jump back down to the lowest energy levels, that emission spectrum contains only the lines that match the difference in the energy shells within the atom. <laughs>